So we've been talking over the last couple of days about power, and uh, here in this region we know a lot about the uh, production of power through, through coal. And so what I want to talk about today is very, very closely related to what Don just talked about and how we can produce power and minimize our water usage. And so my triple play that I'm going to talk about is combining geothermal energy, carbon sequestration, and the production of biofuels all into one sustainable system. And so if you know anything about geothermal energy and you know anything about Greek, you know that geo means earth and thermos means heat. And so the idea of geothermal energy is to take the heat from the ground, from the earth, and produce some kind of energy from that. And we see that if we go deeper and deeper into the earth, we know as we get towards the core of the earth, it gets very, very hot. So if to produce geothermal energy, we really don't have to go that far. We don't need to go 6,000 kilometers because we don't need 5,000 degrees. We only need a few hundred degrees. So we can go just a few kilometers into the earth and actually get a lot of heat out. But how do we do that? We see that if, if we go to Yellowstone, you see the earth's geothermal power uh, visually. We see the geysers, we see Old Faithful, and we see this energy just come rushing out of the ground. So how in the world are we going to tap that? Well, it's easy. We drill. And we in the, here in the east, we're familiar with drilling, uh, but all we have to do is we drill down into the earth, uh, circulate some water, or, as I'll get to in a little bit, maybe some carbon dioxide, and we can produce power at the surface through a power plant, just like what you might have at a coal burning power plant or a natural gas power plant. You run the steam or hot water through a turbine or through a binary power cycle and produce electricity from the heat in the earth. And so if we look at geothermal across a continuum, and the two, the two parameters that I like to look at are what are called permeability, which is the ability of fluid to flow through the subsurface, and temperature. So obviously we need temperature, but we need this permeability. And so in the west, at Yellowstone, or a place in California called the Geysers, which is the largest geothermal power plant in the world, you might have thought it probably would be in Iceland, but in fact it is in the United States, we have a lot of permeability and we have a lot of heat. Now here in the east, we really don't have either of, uh, we don't have a lot of both of those. But what we can do is as we drill down into the earth, we can do what's called engineered or enhanced geothermal systems where we frack the fluid or we frack the reservoir in the subsurface just like they're doing in the Marsalis in the area already, and we can circulate this fluid through the subsurface. All right, so, all right, well, how hot is it really in the United States? If we look in the west, you can see this nice big purple dot, right? That's obviously Yellowstone, a big volcano and caldera. But if you look through Nevada and Utah and Idaho, you can see lots and lots of high temperatures. Now, of course, this is the Sun Belt. And so in Nevada, they, they need some alternatives to using water for geothermal energy. And so if we look across the United States and we look at how much geothermal is actually available, I have here what the USGS calls high-grade geothermal. Now, this high-grade geothermal is the stuff that was really bright red and falls on this high permeability continuum. Now, the numbers here, you might not know what an exajoule is. It's 10 to the 18th joules. Well, of course, you still probably don't know what that is. It's, an exajoule is about one quad, which is one quadrillion BTU. The U.S. uses about 100 quadrillion BTUs a year of primary energy, 100 quads or 100 exajoules. Well, there's about one or 10,000 uh, quads of geothermal, high-grade geothermal in the United States. Now, if we look at geopressured systems, where, which is where the system is pressurized, or even these EGS systems, we see we have thousands of years of energy stored in the earth if we can only find a way that is sustainable with minimized water usage in order to produce that. And so our electricity production today from geothermal leads the world. We have about 2.5 gigawatts of electricity produced worldwide. There's about 9 gigawatts of electricity currently produced today from geothermal energy. But if we uh, lower our standards and, and use this for what's called direct use, if we use this energy to heat our homes or to heat industries or to create process steam uh, for industries, we can dramatically increase uh, the amount of energy that we use uh, in terms of geothermal. And you see worldwide usage is about 16 gigawatts of thermal energy primary energy around the world. Now we can, we can increase this number dramatically if we find in inventive ways. Now recently in science it was uh, reported that West Virginia is a geothermal hotspot. Now really, that probably would surprise a lot of you. Uh, we know that we don't see any geysers in West Virginia and those hot springs like Berkeley Hot Springs that George Washington used to go visit aren't really that hot compared to the West. 
but it is in fact a, a pretty good geothermal resource. Now here I'm showing six and a half kilometers, which is a pretty deep uh, system, but the temperature at about six and a half kilometers is probably about 200 or 250 degrees Celsius uh, in, in the mountains of West Virginia. This is in fact a very viable resource if we can figure out a way to tap into it. If we go deeper to seven kilometers, it's about 250 degrees. So if we can find cheap ways to drill and ways that we can minimize our water usage, I keep coming back to this, but we can find a way to sustainably produce geothermal energy. Now one thing is we know West Virginia and Pennsylvania, is, they are coal states. So we know that we produce a lot of power and we have a lot of carbon dioxide at our hands. So maybe, just maybe, we can use that carbon dioxide instead of water in these geothermal systems. And if we're able to do that in a sustainable manner, if we capture the CO2 from a, from a, a coal burning power plant, which would in effect drop the production of that power plant by about 20%, but then we take that CO2, circulate it through the ground, bring the heat back up with it, then we can recover that 20%, make a carbon neutral system, and produce the same amount of power. Now that sounds very exciting. Now we can also use that hot CO2 and produce heat for homes. We can produce uh, biofuels by uh, combining this hot CO2 in the geothermal system uh, with uh, biomass pyrolysis with lots and lots of timber resources uh, in these areas. And so we have this very untapped geothermal resource in West Virginia. And believe me, this geothermal resource doesn't stop at the Mason-Dixon line. It keeps going up in, into New York even. And so this resource is a potential for us to combine CO2 sequestration, geothermal energy in the form of direct use and electricity production, and produce some biofuels in the area, which would help us create a more sustainable system while minimizing our water usage and uh, creating a carbon neutral system. So, thank you. <laughs>